So we're going to continue our exploration of E by estimating E by Monte Carlo simulation. Um, so it's well known there's a common way to estimate pi using Monte Carlo. And it so happens that the, there's also this simple approach for estimating E uh, by Monte Carlo. And if you don't know, Monte Carlo is a category of algorithms that utilize random sampling. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, I think people get a little intimidated when they hear Monte Carlo, but um, what we're going to do here is going to be, uh, it's going to be very simple. And really this algorithm, this algorithm is very elegant and it's very easy to describe. So we're gonna sample a number between zero and one. And uh, we're going to continue to sample, right, until the sum of our samples exceeds 1. We'll store the count of samples, and we're going to repeat this procedure for some number of times, and then average the results. So uh, let's walk through something that looks like this. Um, let's say on our first sample, we get 0 0.273 some some number. And then on our second sample, we get, uh, for simplicity, I'm just gonna say 0 0.5, and let's just imagine that. And so the sum of these at this point, our, our sum should be, you know, 0 0.773, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so we would sample again. And let's say on our third sample, uh, we get 0 0.6, something, five, four, one, whatever. Um, we've exceeded one, and so we're going to save this value three, right? And uh, we're gonna set that aside, and we're gonna start this process over. And so what we're going to be doing is collecting into, we can imagine collecting into a list, we start with three, and maybe on the next time we get one, uh, except we can't actually get one, my, my apologies, because uh, our random sampling approach is going to not exceed one. So let's say we get two, and then we get two again, and then we get four, and maybe sometimes we get five, and maybe, we, you know, and so on and so on. If we average these results, the results of these numbers, we are going to, uh, as we increase the number of samples, right? Here we've got five plus samples. As we increase the number of samples, we're going to be approaching E. So that's pretty cool. Let's write this in Python. And I'm still working in the same file. Um, I'm also going to import uh, from random. I'm gonna import random. Uh, random is a function that's just going to give us a value between uh, zero and one. Okay. Now this is, uh, this is this is very very straightforward. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, get count exceeds one, and um, the accumulator. Initially, I'm just going to get a random value, right? Uh, that's going to be less than one, and uh, then I'm going to say for i in range, I could use a while loop here. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use a while loop though. Uh, instead, I'm going to, because uh, I want to get this counter, I'm going to assume um, it's so improbable that we're going to get 10,000 trials uh, that it's going to take us 10,000 times to draw a one with a, you know, uh, sorry, to, to exceed one, that um, I think this is a safe number. I could do 100,000. It really doesn't matter, uh, to be honest, because I'm never going to run this this many times. So whatever, arbitrarily large, arbitrarily large number. And I'm going to increment, I'm going to increase our accumulator by another random number. And then I can simply ask the question, if the accumulator is greater than one, well, then we, we return that value of i. So if we get it on our initial iteration of this loop, we're gonna return two. And that's going to reflect an initial random draw and a second random draw. Okay, and I, at the end of this, I can, oh, I don't need to return it. I already returned i. 
And that's really what we want. Okay. So this, uh, we're assuming uh, surety of this exiting, okay? And it should never return none. And then, uh, as we've been doing, we'll, let's pack this into a dictionary. Simple enough. Um, I'm going to call this the exceeds one dictionary. And uh, we're going to give it a n number of samples. And I'm going to instantiate a dictionary. And I'm going to say for whatever in range, uh, the number of samples. Our count. Uh, this is just a count, the count of trials that it takes to exceed one. Um, this is just going to get count exceeds one. And uh, if the count is not in the dictionary, I could use a default dictionary. Uh, I'm sure someone will point that out to me in the comments, but I'm not using a default dictionary because I'm assuming the uh, students watching this uh, haven't seen default dictionaries and we want them to be able to use base Python as it is um, and the logical constructs in that. Uh, so I'm just going to check for membership of count in the dictionary. If it's not in there, I'm going to initialize it uh, with the count of zero. Um, and that's going to work for me. And then I'm going to increment it by one, right? So if we observe it, um, if we observe it, then we increment it by one. I can return the dictionary and that's going to, um, that's going to reflect the, essentially the histogram of, of values, the histogram showing the counts uh, of random draws that it takes to exceed the value one. Okay, so I'm going to set my number of samples to a thousand. Why not? It's easy. That's what it already is, but uh, we're going to utilize that in some ways in a moment. Um, I'm going to get a dictionary uh, with a thousand samples, and I'm going to say for samps, the count of samps in, and I'm sorting, just notice this, I, I'm sorting the dictionary because I want the counts in order. Otherwise, uh, you know, it might take four draws on the first try, and I'd, I'd rather see one draw, or sorry, two draws, three draws in the order that they appear. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, okay, so samps, and then count of samps. And uh, I think, well, let, let's look at that. And uh, I'm gonna put a little bit more in here just to, uh, in, in just a moment, but let's uh, let's look at this. Oop. Key error two. D sub count plus get zero. Ah, I need to initialize with D sub count gets zero, not plus get zero. Okay, um, let's look at this histogram. Also, I am still printing something from the last video. Let me comment that out. Sorry about that. Let's run that again. Okay, so here we've got here we've got a histogram, and you might consider that if we run this again, we'll get different numbers. And why don't I just show that, right? Uh, but not that different, really. Um, they're they're pretty close. So uh, here we've got uh, 490, 356, and you might. Think about this. Our uh, our modal values are between two and three, um, and this might give you a sense of, uh, you know, where uh, to which side our weight is floating between two and three. Um, but that you know that's just a a little hint before we get into this next part. Um, let's average those counts. So. Uh, usually in my videos uh, for students, I don't use um, I don't use comprehensions too much, uh, and and that's that's because a lot of our students are new. And um, for this, I'm going to use a comprehension, and I'll challenge you if you don't understand comprehensions. I'm going to challenge you to just try to figure this out. So for the key and the value for kv in d dot items, right? That looks like our uh, traditional for loop. I'm going to sum those, right? I'm going to sum the key times the value, okay? And uh, then I'm going to divide that by the number of samples. This is just a mean 
uh, a mean operation, right? I've just taken the average. And uh, the reason I can do that is um, I can multiply 2 times 489, add that to 3 times 327, add that to 4 times 136, and uh, divide all of that by the number of samples to get an average, right? Um, essentially, each of these has a weight uh, that is the count that we're seeing. Um, if uh, if you if you're one of our students and you're having uh, any trouble uh, understanding this uh, this bit of math, reach out to me. Um, I'll I'll explain it in more detail. Okay, so let's see what we get when we run this. Let's run that again. 2.756, 2.704, And let's uh, let's also print E as we've been doing. Okay, so 2.707, 2.718. If you think about it, we can increase these samples in an attempt to get greater precision on E. So uh, we're doing a thousand samples. Why don't I do? Let's do a hundred thousand and see what we get. Now that's looking more and more like E, isn't it? Two point seven one nine six four, two point seven one eight two eight. Th those aren't that far off. Um, let's uh, let's do some more. Let's do, uh, let's try, oops, let's try uh, 10 million. This might take a, take a moment. Might actually be a bit much, but uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. So now we're getting 2.718. Pretty comfortably, we're getting 2.718. All right. If you think about it, uh, we might want to sample from our sampling process in order to better approximate E. Okay, and what do I, what do I mean by that? Okay, so we've got we've got this sampling process that give, gives us a histogram of uh, counts that it takes to exceed. Uh, exceed e right so this this does let's say a thousand samples and we build that histogram we average the results and we get some value so we can increase the number of samples here right let's say to a hundred thousand or something else um, and then we can wrap that process in another process that samples from that let's say I don't know a thousand times and then we can average the results from, from that, from this, okay? And uh, I just want to demonstrate this, that this is a way that we can um, narrow, uh, we, where we can increase our certainty around E or, you know, uh, decrease our uncertainty around E. So let's take a look at how we might do this. So let me comment that out. And I'll just reduce this back to 10,000. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna call this uh, sample from E histograms. Um, I think that that's, it's a name, right? And we'll do this num trials time. So the outer loop is going to be, I'll just do 100. And then uh, let's set our number of samples to, I think we were, we want to do, let, let's, let's try 100,000. I, I think that's, uh, that's reasonable. And so what, what from there? Um, we are going to construct a dictionary. And I'm going to call that D out. And uh, I'm going to say for whatever in range, and this is going to be the number of trials, right? This is our outer loop. 
And for each outer loop, I'm going to build a dictionary. And I'm going to call out to the exceeds one dictionary for num samples times. Um, right now, we're dealing with 100,000. And I'm going to say for the samples and the count of samples. And uh, I don't really need to do this, uh, the sorted. Um, and in fact, I won't. I'll just say in d.items. We can say if if that if those samples are not in d out, then d out uh, sub samps, not sumps, but samps, is going to get an empty list. And uh, under all conditions, um, I'm going to say d out sub samps dot append the count of the samples. Okay. Right. Okay. And uh, that's going to get me a dictionary where the keys are the uh, number of samples, right, that it took to exceed one. And the uh, value associated with that key is going to be uh, a list, a list of the number of times that that occurred. Okay. Um, where that number of samples, uh, of the counts of samples. So um, we can take a look at that if we want, but I'm interested in the average, actually. I, I am not so interested in um, that list, so I'm going to collapse this, right? I could have I could do this as a running average. I, I think this is a little nicer, um, so I'm going to do it this way. Uh, I'm going to process those lists, d out dot items, um, and I'm going to overwrite d out, uh, the values in d out. So I'll say d out sub samps is going to get uh, the sum of the list of the sample counts, samps counts, divided by the length of the list of the samps counts. So I'll just snag that so I don't make a typo. Okay. And then I believe at that point I can just return d out and uh, I should have some working functions. Okay. So let's uh, let's set the number of trials. So uh, the number of trials. We'll do that 100 times. We'll set the number of samples. Uh, we'll do 100,000. And let's see if we, in this in this case, let's see if we've improved on our uh, approximation of E. So I'm going to get uh, build this dictionary sample from E histograms, the number of trials, and the number of samples. Let's say for samps and the count of samps, in the sorted uh, version of d.items. Remember, this might be out of order, um, and I just want to view it in order. And we'll print the uh, samples, right? Uh, and the count of samps. So these are going, this is going to be our averaged histogram, right? Um, which is uh, something that, you know, this process is something we do a lot, like, Oh, we've got this process. Let's sample from it. Okay, let's sample from the sampling of that process over and over again. That's what we're doing here. So, uh, oops. And we'll print um, the average counts again. And uh, this, let's see. Um, this is really just the same. So k times v for kv in d dot items. And I'm going to wrap all of that in. A comprehension and I am going to also sum that and divide it by the number of samples not the number of trials but the number of samples okay so print and print e and uh, let me make sure I am not doing some other operation up here let me go ahead and comment those out. Uh, there we go. Don't want to be running too much code. And um, this kind of operation might take a little bit longer. I'm, I'm not actually sure. Uh, well, it won't take any time at all if there's a syntax error. Let's see. 
sum of kv. Oh, it looks like I am missing a uh, end quote here. Okay, there we go. That, hopefully that's it. Okay, name samples from e-histograms is not defined. Did I call it samples? I, I called it sample. Okay, that's easy, easy fix. Errors are your friend. And now we wait for this to run a little bit. Oh, nice. Um, let's figure out what the error is there. All right, so uh, discovering epi line 192. Um, we're getting the error unsupported operand between list and int. Okay. Um, what is that uh, for this? So num samples is an int. This, um, ah, yep. I'm missing a close parenthesis here. And then uh, we do not need a close parenthesis there. Okay. All right. Let's see how this goes. Awesome. All right. So um, on average, uh, well, why don't I just copy all of this over, over to here, and let's just look at it a little closer. Um, we're getting these averaged. Uh, we're getting these averaged uh, counts for each number of times it takes to exceed one using our random sampling approach. And, um, you know, notice even out here, uh, huh, we're, we're getting tens and elevens sometimes, which is kind of interesting. Okay. And then, um, the precision that we're able to approach here with a hundred trials of a hundred thousand samples, um, we've got 2.718. So it's not, it's not that much better, but it's not so bad. Um, we're close to getting 2.7182. Um, and I think if we increase the number of trials, uh, you know, why don't we just do that really quick and see if we get a little bit better. So I'll increase the number of trials to 1,000, um, which will take about, should take about 10 times as long. Um, let's see if we get something a little bit more precise. All right, so we came to a result. And let's take a look at this. Interestingly, we we didn't uh, we didn't improve. But um, Oh, no, no, we did. Okay. Uh, ah, you know what, we didn't we didn't really. Um, and that could just be uh, because of this run. Um, but we did still get 2.718. Um, although in this case, uh, we're getting 2.71855. And, uh, you know, theoretically, if we increase the number of trials and the number of samples, we should expect to improve on this even further. But uh, there isn't a guarantee that on any given run that we do, um, at least not until we increase those numbers quite a bit more. Uh, but yeah, at any rate, this is a uh, uh, a Monte Carlo method for approximating E. Um, we're gonna have one more video with a small application of E that um, you know just shows a, a single example, but uh, there are many examples shows the utility of E in um, in various things that we try to do.